Hallo, Didier Stevens hier, senior handler at the Internet Storm Center. In his diary entry of 25th of March, Xavier talks about XLSB files. So those are binary uh, spreadsheets, but they are like the OOXML format. Eh? So it's a zip container with XML, but a lot of the XML files are actually replaced by binary files, which uh, have the XLSB uh, format. And uh, he had a malicious document like that. And he used my tool zipdump to find the URLs and extract them as strings from a particular uh, file inside the zip container. And then a bit later, I made a specific tool, XLSB dump, uh, to uh, pass those uh, documents. Now there's also a, a more generic approach to this, and that is just looking for strings. But since we are dealing here with a zip container that also contains XML files, uh, we, we will get a lot of strings out of those XML files, and we're not necessarily interested into them. So I worked out a method with my tools and a new tool to show you how this can be done. And this is in this diary entry, and that's what I'm going to show you here in this uh, video. So if we run zip dump on that XLS file, you see it's in a zip container with uh, some XML files, but then a lot of bin files. As you can see, the worksheet sheet one here is not an uh, XML file, but it's a bin file. It's a, a binary file. And so what we want to do is extract the strings from those binary files and not the XML files. I'm going to show you why. Now, if you just run the strings command on that sample here, you won't get anything useful because it is compressed. So yeah, here you get, for example, the file name because the file name is in clear text in that zip container in one of the records. But for the rest, there's nothing uh, interesting. It's nothing you know, that is actionable. So you actually need to decompress this. And you can decompress all the files contained in a zip file with zip dump using up option D, uppercase D. And this will just decompress all the files and send them to standard out. So in there I can again run strings. And I'm using my tool here, strings. And I'm going to sort for length. And that's what I often do with my tool strings.py. And that's why, partially why I implemented to have this option. This will sort the extracted strings for their length. And the longest strings are at the end. Because often the most interesting strings in uh, malicious documents are long strings. It's not always the case, but okay. And that's what we get here. And here we have a lot of XML because an XML file, yeah, that's actually one long string. And that's what we have at the end here. And it's only here uh, uh, before all that XML uh, that we have something interesting. And that looks like URLs. Now, let me show you how you can get rid of all the strings in these XML files when you run the strings command. Now, first of all, we need to switch to another format, a JSON format. We instruct zipdump to export JSON. And we instruct strings to import, uh, to read JSON. So zipdump will uh, put JSON standard out and strings will read JSON from standard in. Okay, and then you get this, which is actually the, the same result, but we are using an other format. As you can see here, this is how this looks. Hmm. JSON, first ID, the name is content type, and here you have the content in base64, uh, and that goes on for each file in uh, that zip file. Hmm. So it's a structured content, it's not like option D, where all the content was concatenated in one big stream of bytes. Now here there, with JSON, there is structure to it. 
That is something I started to implement some time ago, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, that some of my tools support that uh, JSON format that I defined. Because my idea was to also have a tool that would allow me to filter that uh, JSON format and make selections. And that is a new tool. It's my JSON filter. And you can, for example, then specify I want to select every stream that contains the keyword XML. Uh, the, the, so that's with the C option and XML is actually a regular expression. So it filters for regular expressions. And if we do that, you see here, uh, so docs prop up XML because in the content there is the keyword XML. Here also core. So these are all XML files that are selected. When you run it like this, you get the JSON output. Now, to help you uh, make your filters, there's also an option L. And this will give you a list of all the items that were selected. As you can see, XML and RELs. Uh, there are no bins in here. But I want a better filter than just saying XML because yeah, the keyword, well, the trick character combination XML might also appear in a bin file and, and, I, and I don't want that. So an actual XML file starts with a smaller than question mark XML. So that's a regular expression that we are going to use. Now smaller than has a special meaning in uh, the shell here in cmd.dixie, so we are going to put this between double quotes. And the question mark is also a special character for regular expressions, so we are going to escape this. And then we also want to find this right at the beginning. So that's with the caret here that you indicate. So, so that is a regular expression to say select all files that have a content that starts with smaller than question mark XML, like this. And that's what we have. Now these are not the files we want to search in. Uh, we want to search in the other files, those that do not start with XML. And for that, you can use a flag. And this is not regular expression syntax. This is a uh, syntax specific to the tool. A hash, a V, and a hash. That's the way you can give flags. And the V flag is the flag like in grep uh, option V to invert the selection like this. So now we have inverted the selection as you can see here. Those are all bin files, also PNG file that are now being selected. So if we just run this without the L option, we actually have the JSON file content for those files. And now we can pass this on to strings by say it is JSON input and sort for the length. And now we have immediately the interesting strings at the end. Eh? The XML is ignored for string extraction. And that's why we have less strings to go through. And here, as it is, eh, we are uh, a bit lucky. The interesting strings, the longest strings are at the end. Here looks like URL and here you can see uh, a part. If you take a close look, this is actually string concatenation. Huh? So H concatenate with TTP, concatenate with S. Okay? So I'm going to decode this. First of all, I'm no longer going to sort for length, but I'm going to select, let's try everything that is at least 50 um, characters long. Okay, and now we only have those expressions. And then I'm just going to remove this here, the double quote, ampersand double quote. And I'm going to use SCD, the stream editor. So I'm going to substitute a double quote and I'm using the hexadecimal representation here, ampersand again double quote and I'm going to replace this with nothing and I'm going to do this globally like this and then in this way you have extracted the strings the URLs so in one 
single command without writing anything uh, to disk you are able to filter um, zip files uh, my office documents filter them for binary files and then do a string search into in those binary files.